Hi guys, I'm Nicholas Walwerk, CEO of Redbrick and PropertyForum.com. I'm joined today by Tom Gillett, our head uh, contract administrator, PM, um, general, well, he's the boss actually. Um, so, hi Tom, again, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Excellent, thank you. Um, we bumped into Tom earlier on site and we actually started talking about the internal wall types in construction. So I thought it'd be good to pull him aside, get him mic'd up and we'll have a chat about these kind of internal wall types. So we stood in one of the corridors here um, at our client's site down in Fleet. Um, and it came up earlier that um, we, we started off with, I think you said 17 different wall types designed by the architect um, down to 10 we've managed to engineer. I say we, the royal we, you've managed to engineer it down. Um, so talk to me a little bit about wall types. You know, we're here and you can see, I don't know if you guys can pan up, there's two layers of plasterboard that are going in here that are overlapped. So this will obviously come down once all the electrics and plumbing and anything that needs to go in these walls is done. The first fix, this will get finished off, but there's two boards here, there's two the other side. Now this is a communal corridor. So we're communal corridor into the flat. So this is probably um, acoustic board uh, mainly, and it's gonna be, it's very thick, it's very dense, it's very heavy to you know, absorb that sound. Um, but how do we get from 17 down to, to 10? And, and what are those 10 types that we've ended up with? Um, first of all, I think you've got to recognize that internal uh, walls, we try and avoid as far as possible building in brick and block, unless there's a, a real structural reason for doing so. Okay. It's a wet trade, takes longer, very cumbersome. Thicker as well. Often. Of course, you can't get them as of course. Uh, this is a permitted development, so to a certain extent, we're already using some of the internal walls that are here around the staircase and these sort of areas. Um, this sort of wall system is generically called metal stud, but a stud wall uh, can be timber, it two, can be metal, two timber. Yeah, sure, and well. again depending on the type of wall it is, it can either be structural or non-structural. Yeah. So we have the header and the bottom tracks, and as you go around the site you'll see these areas here, which is ostensibly where the, the vertical uprights are fixed into. So as I said again, you may see them in timber, you may see them in metal. There's really... Uh, my preference actually is timber because I do find that the timber ones give you far more flexibility but this all goes back to the planning. If you happen to know, it doesn't matter that we're in a corridor right now, but if you happen to know that this wall, as you can see, will have nothing but insulation in it and therefore just be achieving uh, some specification, some performance in terms of, of thermal or acoustic. The fact is though, there's still a void there. So by the time the plasterboard goes on, if you want to fix a telly, a shelf or anything there, you're just asking for problems because there's nothing inside now the the, the, the member that you would do is you need is, those horrible plasterboard screws you get from b&q which are which like, i rip big chunks of wall out at home and the wife goes what on earth are you doing and i go that's why i get a handyman round because i actually have no clue how but, to even but e equally e telly. equally this is half the problem because with the metal ones of course you can't screw into no. whereas the timber ones historically you can so sure. it does have that yeah, advantage there is, there is. the bracing across is generally called noggins which is a fantastic mm -hmm. word uh, and so what you want to do is obviously make sure you've got your noggins where you think in future you're going to be putting some things in. Sure. Failing that, you play it safe and put a large piece of ply and then obviously you can fix anything in. So yeah. it goes back to the plan again. Try and also decide in terms of the layout where everything is going and particularly if it's a development job where you think your likely tenants, your owners are going to be putting shelves or TVs or indeed fix them for them and then you can minimize the expenditure in the first place by not putting noggins yeah, everywhere, everywhere where, but yeah. and putting it in the key places. Yeah, yeah. Typical place might be in the corner or over a yeah. fireplace. Um, as far as performance is concerned, it, the structure of the wall is highly dependent upon what it is you're trying to achieve. Now what you're trying to achieve may be dictated by the area. So for instance, this is a, this is a corridor that therefore will form part of a fire escape. So the fire performance of this will have to be good Stronger enough. Stronger than internal flat walls. Yeah, internal Basically, walls yeah. will not have to necessarily be an hour or even two hours in some cases, but certainly an hour. What's the minimum? Half hour. Half hour, and that's, fire doors are sometimes half an hour or an hour, aren't they? Depending yeah, on but they again, well. it's not just about the fire door, it's about the fire frame, the intermittent yeah, strip, it's about the hole. It's it effectively how you're filling that hole. Mm. Because should there be a fire, the heat uh, temperature obviously rises and the intermittent strip then expands and that's what forms yeah. that's what forms a seal and, and gives you and gives you the that's the strip that fits inside the door correct that then is sort of kind of a plasticky thing yeah that will just not to be mixed up with the draft excluder no okay um, is there any structural elements of this we can see on site i think around the doors there seems well to be there will a bit. be at the mezzanines here in, here's a kind of rounded off c-section isn't it so that that's going to be probably stronger than that because that's got to take the weight 
of that wall above it, actually, isn't it? So that's exactly right. I mean, the obvious, slightly... the obvious ones is downstairs where the where the mezzanine was built. Yeah. So you can downstairs? see downstairs. Mezzanines are up here. They're around here. Am I upstairs? Around here. Let's go. Let's go and see them. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> They're just around here. Are we not up? <laughs> yes. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Oh, no, yeah, hell. Sorry. Tom, get your get. You want to scrub reading... that? You want to scrub that? Get your reading glasses. Don't scrub it. Don't scrub it. <laughs> Here we are. So we're in the mezzanines. I mean, this is very different to the internal walls. Of course, these are proper engineers. Yeah, these are. But these steams. members, these members, and the joists underneath there so are. These so are. so this is where you're talking about noggins up here. These are noggins. They're just the little pieces of wood that go in between the main struts. Yeah. Now this is six by two timber. That's right. Suitable for the structural support needed if that's you're standing right. upstairs. And of course, the size of the timber is something which structural engineers will tend to over-design, often to a factor of three. <laughs> yes. uh, and I kid you not. So as a consequence... Don't talk to me about over-engineering. So as a consequence, <laughs> um, to value engineer something, maybe to challenge that, doesn't mean that they will necessarily capitulate, because at the end of the day, their liability, their insurance liability for designing something, is dependent on them doing it right. Mm -hmm. But don't be scared to challenge them, because at the end of the day, you know, there could be, a, you know, if you can get a 10% reduction in terms of the, of the material spec, that could save you a lot of money. Well, to be honest, the first pass, you know, and I don't wish to tarnish the brush of all consultants, totally unfair, because I'm sure there's lots of consultants out there who are watching this that, um, you know, are extremely good at their jobs, but it's, 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 it's all too easy to over-engineer anything. You know, all too easy, isn't it? Because you could just guesstimate way more than you know on a, you know, back of a fag packet calculation, let's stick on double, and we know we'll be all right. You know, actually to get the detail you know, this is an interesting time, I'm just talking out loud, but to get the detail closer to what is actually the maximum load, that needs much more careful calculation. And you've got to look at a lot more of the detail around it. So actually, if you over-engineer it, you know it's going to work and there's less calculation time. Am I being harsh? No, it's about mitigating risk at the end of the day. That whether whether, that, whether, whether well. that structural yeah. collapse, whether it's fire. Yeah. Um, Have you got a family acoustic? of 25? Indeed. Rotund. Uh, so the building regulations, are, are building regulations are there to... Um, obviously to set a standard, but again, a development like this has not got to comply with all the latest building rates because it's a permitted development scheme. Same way that we recently completed another job which was grade two listed building. The approved inspector came and said he wasn't happy with the treads and riser on the staircase, coming mm -hmm. in with the staircase. Well, we couldn't do that because it was a listed building, so we had to work with the staircase that we had. Yeah. Um, so really, it is site specific. Uh, often the easiest ones is when you're building a building in the middle of a field, it's a brand new site, you've got to comply with all the latest regulations and mindful of Grenfell incident, those, those are being revised as we speak and there will be even more stringent uh, regulations, particularly with regards to fire. And I think that's the point, if I may just mention, I think that's you know, a key point that working with you know, good project management team, good consultants is key because actually you can save a huge amount of cost pushing back on the, con you know, the building inspectors pushing back on certain consultants, value engineering the site. Um, that's a key part of a construction phase. If you don't have a good project management team, good QSs on board, you're going to get taken for a little bit of a ride by the main contractor, by all the consultants, by building control. You need this, 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 and this. All right, okay, if you don't know any different, what's the answer? No, I don't, no, I'm not going to do that building control officer. I, I, you, you, you know, that experience is invaluable, isn't it? It, so, it is, but you've got to be able to sleep nights. You've got to be able oh, to know I'm, I'm that you're developing. I'm not talking about under-engineering. No, no, no. You know, the building inspector's got to sign up no, no, at the no, end of the day. That's people don't there. get fired because they ever engineer things. They get challenged, they don't get selected again. It's when they have tried to cut corners. Definitely. Um, I wouldn't that, suggest that for one moment. No, no, and of course we don't. But it is not unreasonable, whether it's the approved inspector, whether it's, whether it's the local authorities, to push back and challenge their interpretation of certain matters uh, because often you find these are merely just cut and paste exercises they're doing which they could take from one site to another so i say again look at it from a site specific point of view and there may be opportunities there for you to do things quicker more economically and at the end of the day without any compromise in the structure that you're building and the performance to which it's uh, it's got to work to my final question really is we've gone from 17 types down to 10 different types of wall type there'll be some people at home asking how have you done that you know is that not cutting corners what's the situation there Obviously, that was clearly over-engineered a little bit by the architect, with all due respect to them. Um, how have we gone from 17 to 10? What have we kind of lost? A couple of things, really. The layout obviously changed to a certain extent. So where there's okay. reconfigurations, obviously, we can reduce the number of walls. We can use existing walls, because, again, we're talking about an existing structure, which already had steelwork in, which we could do. Um, the makeup of the wall type, depending on how it's boarded, what the material is we're using, insulation, this sort of thing, can actually achieve more than one purpose. So sure, invariably okay. those that have a very good acoustic performance are invariably better when it comes to thermal, not necessarily okay. structural,
but of course those with good strong structural performances you're very fine are very good when it comes to acoustic and thermals. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, also when you look again at how you create internal walls um, can we make internal walls uh, of such a type that where they are butt up to another internal wall which may be to next door to what extent do we have to make sure the performance of that is higher than say the external compartmentation of the wall. So it's really just a matter of reconfiguring it so that we aren't necessarily wasting materials but at the same mm. time are satisfying uh, the requirements that we want. And that has all sorts of benefits because you can buy in bulk, you can buy more types of one material than having you know 17 different types, you don't have to buy 10 different types so you're buying more of, the, of some of those 10 aren't you? Yeah and, 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 and particularly at the moment where you know building materials are in short supply it is important that you freeze that design so that the procurement route can ensure that that's not likely to change, which by its very nature then would, would, would intrinsically need a different type of material, which otherwise might not easily be available. Absolutely. So do have one, you know, give a, a thought as you're doing this layout to what is readily available as well. Good you point. may be forced to go down a more expensive route to achieve those same performance criteria, uh, point, because, yeah. you know, the more general readily available materials just aren't there. Really helpful. Okay, well, thanks for that, Tom. Really insightful advice there. Thank you guys for watching. I um, hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing about 17 different potential wall types in a development. It's not exactly um, you know, something you'll talk to your mum about on a weekend um, or your other half, to be honest, but it is important. Um, it is part of development and understanding the detail. Um, and I think you know, understanding how much you can value engineer your product um, and your project, you know, working with the right team, you know, value engineering stuff down, by design, by working with consultants, by having experience in this kind of detail, and that's why I'm demonstrating it, working with people um, to be able to do that is critical. If you're a first time investor and developer and you're, you're doing hands-on project management on a, on a medium or decent sized scheme, um, you could get yourself into some serious difficulties cost-wise not understanding this detail. So hopefully this has helped you guys at home. Um, if you'd like me to help you with your own site and bring in my team uh, to deliver your site, whether it's in trouble or you're starting out and you want to get off uh, to a flying start and tap into 20 years plus experience in the industry so you don't make the same mistakes I've made, please reach out nicholaswarwick.com forward slash mentorship I can help run your site for you. Um, indeed, if you're um, a hands-off investor like to invest in Red Brick, our company, we do development sites like this at the moment. We're working on a care home conversion um, down in Hampshire, which you can check out on the channel. Follow that as well. Really interesting build. We're just starting some exchange at the moment, completing, I think, in a month. We've just asked for vacant possessions. So that's really exciting coming up. Uh, so check that out. Anyway, please do subscribe, hit the bell icon, and make sure you comment so we can hear what you're doing at home and what your sites and what you're up to. See you again on another video very soon. Thank you.